A great morning out there. Welcome to another live broadcast. This is the voice of Isaac Phillips at Kintola on our Potter's Gate online broadcast. And this is our prophetic prayer school. We want to especially welcome you this morning if you're connecting with us on this frequency. Well, this morning, by the grace of God, we will continue to dip into the heart of the Father. <clears throat> we'll continue to dig deep into his heart, into his heart, into his design, into his mind into his will, into his purpose and desire for our life. What a day we live in. We live in such a, a sacred, blessed and fulfilling day. Of course, it's also a day where heaven amen, is pointing to things in our life that needs to be corrected, that needs to be adjusted. It's a day of judgment. And I believe to Saturday in the grain, it's a day where Saturday condemnation will be, will, be, will be highlighted. And we need to really put our hearts, put our lives, amen, in the heart, in the hand of the master. This is a time where we have to connect with his voice, his, his intention, his plans, his purpose. It's a day where the spirit of God is strongly emphasizing that we need to return back to the Lord. And so this morning, I just want to welcome you as you connect with us this morning. There's so many uh, activity in the spirit. There's su such an excitement, <laughs> right, in the atmosphere. Right, when I say excitement, it's both positive and negative. But of course, we need the two to keep our heart abreast, amen, with God's plan and purpose for our life. We understand one thing that we are aligning, amen, with the desires of God and the heart of God for this brand in there. And therefore, we are not moved. We are not shaken. We have continued, amen, to call upon the nations to pray and to stand and to return to the lord all right the lord once again is proving himself mighty and strong on behalf of the land and it's time for us amen to to align our heart and to connect amen with his intention father we come before you this morning once again we approach your throne we ask you oh god that you grant us grace <clears throat> excuse me, that you grant us, O oh God, grace to have a posture, to remain, O oh God, in the place of your divine pleasure. We yield our heart, soul, and body to you this morning. Lord, we bind our minds, our thoughts, O oh God, our desire, our aspirations, and everything, O oh God, that uh, represents who we are. We lay them down this morning. We ask, O oh God, that once again, your, your, your fire will purify us and cleanse us, O oh God, from all unrighteousness, everything that is contrary to your intentions and desire. We lay them down this morning. We embrace your ways. We embrace your will. We embrace your desire. We embrace your intention. We pray this morning that your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives, in our homes, in our family. And of course, in our nation, we thank you this morning that as your spirit continue to speak expressly to us, help us to adjust and constantly align. We pray that this morning that the knowledge of your glory that is already pervading the earth, oh God, yes, will continue to speak even in the high places, in the place of power and authority. We bless you. We glorify you this morning for your intention and counsel. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> Welcome, uh, uh, my dear sister, uh, Reverend Stella, this morning. Nice to have you. Nice to, uh, to have you connect with us this morning. All right. And those who are also connecting with us, thank you so much for connecting. Well, this morning, we're going to continue to look into the heart of God. The Lord is speaking to us. He has not stopped speaking. Amen. Amen. The, the Lord is still on the throne. Amen. No matter what is going on, no matter what is happening around or within us, we need to be assured of one thing. Amen. The kingdom of God is coming. Amen. We are in the day of the nearness of his glory. The power of God more than ever before. Amen. He's, he's moving in the earth. We are seeing, amen, nations turning up. Amen. Coming to the reality and to the knowledge of God. Yes. Two things are happening. In fact, three things if you ask me are happening simultaneously. This is a time where the Spirit of God is speaking on different layers. Amen. So we have to know what God is saying. Amen. We have to have that spiritual context of you know the speakings of God. Thank you so much Sister Myrtle for connecting this morning. Alright. This is a time where we've got to, we've got to develop we've got to upgrade our prophetic engagement to this to the dealings of god to the speakings of god so at least we know amen what god is doing what god is saying at every level all right i, I said sometime the bible says you know the voice of god is like many waters that 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 speaks into the different the, you know various layers of the speakings of god the speakings of god amen are coming to us as the church the speakings of god amen are addressing all right the arrogance of the nation the speakings of god are dealing with the issues of injustice the issues of you know the speakings of god are dealing with many of the things that we have neglected so we have to really believe the lord to give us a, a, you know a broad spiritual you know perspective so that we are not 
we're not fixative on one area all right it, when when god begins to speak and we begin to see the judgment of god we just need to look to the other side you're going to be seeing the redemptive power of god and wherever you see the redemptive power of god you can be rest assured amen that god is judging something all right the day god brought noah into into the ark the day god brought noah into the ark and shut the ark amen to redeem noah amen that was the same day he began to judge so we've got to have all of this as a spiritual perspective that we don't just focus on one area which may, may we not as believer in this day just be focused on corona we've got to see amen you know what what, what god is saying what god is doing what is embedded Embedded within all of this shutdown, amen. We have to see what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. We have to see what God, amen, and hear what God is saying to His leaders. We must hear what God is saying, amen, to you know, to 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 keep people, amen, at the gate. We must know what God is saying to us as parents, as you know, husband, as wife, amen, as as boss, amen. We've got to know what God is saying to us as a nation. We have to know what God is saying to us as a generation, as a church. We have to know. So 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 these are days where we've got to have what I call holistic understanding amen of the dealings of god of the speakings of god all right the bible says we know in part and therefore we prophesy in part <clears throat> So we've got to begin to bring all the various parts together. I was saying yesterday, this is the time where we need prophets to all come together so that they can all give us their perspective. Okay, what is God saying to you? What is God saying to me? What is God saying to, you know, to, to, to her? We, we, this is the time where we need to have a broad spiritual you know, perspective because indeed it's a day of reset. We said it in the, in the beginning of this year that this decade is going to be amen, the decade of reset. God is resetting the earth. All right? And this reset is preparing us for the appearing, hallelujah, of the man child. This, this, this reset is bringing us, is, is a window of opportunity, is a time for us, amen, to, you know, to, to turn a new leaf to God, hallelujah, to offer our heart once again to him in redemption. Heaven wants to locate us again where he found the first man in the garden, in the garden. Adam, where are you? where are you amen we have shifted we've moved away from you know from where the father has positioned us from where amen he comes to commune and and communicate with us and this is the reason why we're facing all of the things that we are facing today all right because we are, man is no longer positioned where he was assigned to be all right we've allowed the enemy amen to invade our garden we have allowed the enemy to invade our nation we've allowed the enemy to invade our space as the church amen as a nation we've lost the sense of vision we've lost the sense of direction we've lost the sense of the speakings of god okay we've become more selfish more self-centered we've left the ways of god so heaven is calling us we've been reading that scripture in you amen it said come return to the lord this is the day where we must return to god but we must return with a contrite heart we must return with a circumcised heart amen as a nation we have allowed pride amen to to you know to to clothe us we've allowed our arrogance our, our ignorance amen our insecurity to push us away from God's divine order, from God's prophetic plan for our nation. I mean, I was sent to this nation, amen, to bring alignment, to bring, you know, order, to bring the restoration of the, uh, you know, of the bond gate and the and the broken walls. That's my assignment. That's what I'm doing. This is God's plan. I hope you understand that when when God gives us a vision, amen, He He always factor, amen, all that will be happening within, amen, that which He has given to us. So that's why I know, all right, that. It's it's not over. This is just the beginning. All right. And we will continue to speak, amen, to the powers that be. We'll continue to declare. We'll continue to, you know, speak to, you know, to the forces. We'll continue to engage, hallelujah, all the dysfunctionality and all the, mis, you know, misdirections and misconceptions because God has a date with this nation, South Africa. All right. Of course, I'm interested in what is going on across the globe. Yes. Because the plans and the purposes of God, amen, are all interconnected. When you do your part amen and they, they do their part all right there's there's a place of convergence all right as, as god is dealing with italy and dealing with you know china and dealing with america god is dealing with south africa everyone amen must rise up today and face the music and face amen the judgment throne of god
God. This is the time God is saying, well, I'm calling you. Come stand before me. What have you done with the time, with the resource that I've given to you? What have you done, amen, with the, with, 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 with the materials I've given to you as a nation? What have you done, amen? I mean, you, you, you look at our nation today. You, you, you want to give our leaders a, you know, a, a, a kind of a score. Look at how they're handling this thing. Well, to, to a certain degree, you know, the, the, the president is trying, but guess what? I think, I think, I think they, they approach this thing too late. But all of that is highlighting something, highlighting our weakness, highlighting, you know, our, our sense of disconnection, highlighting our sense of, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 humanity, all right? Connecting to what needs to be, you know, what, what needs to be dealt with, you know, at the time that needs to be dealt with. So all of this is revealing things to us. So this is going to be a time of review. It's going to be a time where we'll have to go back to the drawing board, drawing board amen, and begin to correct certain things, particularly from the very structures of our heart, our attitude to life, attitude to each other, our sense of you know, a, a, a arrival, our sense of pride. All of that must be dealt with. The Lord is speaking to us. And therefore, I, I believe that as we pray, all right, we're going to continue to engage the heart of God because as we highlight amen, the judgment of God and all that the Spirit of the Lord is doing and saying, we also need to intercede. We also need to stand in the gap. Yes, you know, that's the beauty of the prophetic. Yesterday we read a scripture. Hopefully I'm, I'm about to look into that scripture again. All right, they said, they said, watch man. What is, in fact, let me go back to that scripture. Let's look at that scripture. Uh, it, it, in fact, I didn't, I, I didn't have that scripture in mind this <clears throat> this morning but while while we're on it let's let's see thank you lord in isaiah chapter 20, 20 21 excuse me isaiah chapter 21 all right here's the word of the lord from verse 11 beautiful scripture beautiful scripture you want to check the scripture isaiah 20 21 11 an oracle concerning doma someone calls to me <laughs> from Seir. Someone calls to this, to this, this is, you know, watchman. It says, someone calls to me, amen, from Seir. Watchman, what is, wh what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replied, <laughs> I like this. The morning is coming. It's like, you know, somebody screaming. The morning is coming. He, re he replied back, the morning is coming. But also, the night so don't just fold your hand and say, well, okay, the, no, the, the morning is coming. Ah, there's, uh, the hope is coming. Yes. He said, but also the night. In other words, men will be groping. Amen. In noonday. The night, the, you know, the, 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 the morning will be turned to night. Watchman. The watchman replied, the morning is coming, but also the night. If you, if you would ask, then ask and come back and ask again. This is the word of the Lord. Heaven is speaking to us. Watchmen, people are people are running around. I mean, I I can tell you. I mean, my 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 sight is just buzzing with people searching and looking. What is God saying? You know, they want to know. Everybody's turning to the prophetic, prophetic, prophetic. But we've been talking about this thing for a long time. That's the problem with men. All right, we don't want to. We don't want to hear. God said, "I send you certain. I send you." my servant i send you prophet i send people to warn you to tell you to prepare you but you will not listen now they got to a point somebody remember said wait a minute we can go to the tower watchman what is left of the night this night is just too difficult for us don't aren't we gonna have some morning tell us what is going on watchman what is left of the night friends we are indeed in the night season and the ninth season, of course, is just a transition into the breaking of a new day. But this new day that we're going to step into, listen, friends, it's never going to be, amen, <laughs> in the condition, amen, of how we expect what the new day ought to be. This is the day of the nearness, amen, of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is coming near us more than ever before. Our redemption, hallelujah, is, is getting nearer. 
and and as we as we approach the nearness amen of our redemption and the appearance of the kingdom of god we have to change our priority our sense of connectivity our sense of readiness and preparedness or right, has to be revamped we must understand what the spirit of god is demanding amen of us as humans as nations amen as society as a community as the body of christ as leaders amen as parents amen as 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 young men all, all, every aspect of our life is being impacted in this brand new day. It's a brand new day. We've not been through this part before, but we have reference in the scripture of those who have journeyed ahead of us. And we can, we can begin to align our hearts amen, and our minds amen, into the same attitude, hallelujah, that helped them in, 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 in transiting amen, and in navigating their, you know, you know, their day. This is our day. How are we going to manage this thing? How are we going to respond to this day? How are we going to, amen, allow, you know, the spirit of God to really, you know, walk in our heart to such a degree where we can say we have rendered unto God, amen, a contrite heart, amen. The Bible says a contrite and a, and a broken, a broken and a contrite heart, the Lord will not despise, it will not reject. This is a nation full of pride. As, as, as we have pride, of course, scattered across the nation. But South Africa as a nation, we've allowed pride to blind us. Pride, the pride of the flesh, amen. The pride of man, the lust of the eyes, the lusts of the flesh, all right. The pride of life, we've allowed that to, to so blind us that even our expression of spirituality today is captured in this three, you know, uh, identity lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We have allowed that, and we want God to move in our midst. No, we will never, we will not continue to say the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, while we're doing our own thing. This is this is a this is a time where we have to go back and say, God, we have sinned against you. We want to, we want to turn a new leaf. We we render and listen to this. Not everybody's going to do that, but some of us, Amen, will have to take that upon our shoulder. We have to represent the bunch. We have to represent the whole. We have to represent our nation, Amen. You may say, Well, I, I'm I'm not a proud person. Well. That's your definition. But you know that you live among people, amen, that are full of themselves. You can see it. It's so glaring in the way we do things, in the way we walk, in the way we deal with e each other. All right? There's pride among the, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the various uh, uh, community. All right? If the way the, the colors will look at, all right, the blacks, the way the whites will look at the colors. I mean, we are all full of ourselves. It's time we fall on our knees. All right? This is the day of humiliation yet is a day of humility for those of us tracking the heart of god this is a sacred day for us it's a day where we humble ourselves where we where we go on our knees and but it's a day where god is going to be humbling amen the pride of men yes the loftiness of men and their high look heaven is bringing them down all of this must speak into how we come to the lord how we present lest we come to the lord amen with with some notion of yes we know it all we have it all no no we are secure huh he said you're naked amen you are naked you are naked you say you've got to return to me with all your heart all right don't you think uh, you, uh, your pride your money and all that you have acquired will save you in this brand new day he said it's not going to save you in fact i'm going to show you a scripture in zephaniah is going to it's not going to deliver us amen the, the, all the things that the world system have gathered for themselves as security can you see how everything is collapsing <laughs> today they've even stopped they've, they've stopped counting they've stopped counting they've stopped counting the lost all right they've stopped counting the loss it's just too much the economy of the world has as technically entered into recession and only a fool will say, well, this is no God. Only a fool will say, well, this is just some coincidence. Regardless of, you know, the, the, you know, the things that people are saying that may, might have, you know, struck or struck this idea of Corona. But listen to this. God will use. Have you noticed that whenever God wants to move, he always use an occasion. If God needs to use a corona, he will use a corona. He may use something else. We don't know what he's going to use to tomorrow. But God will always use something that will touch our heart. That will touch the core, amen, of our security. That will touch the very seat, amen, of our pride. And this is what God is doing right now. I said it when we began, when we, when these things began, I said, God is dealing with the nation, amen, the nations, particularly from China, yes. And listen to this, friends. You, you mark what I'm saying now. God is not true with China yet. 
God is not done with China, all right? Because because China defines, all right, the, 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 the economy of the world, basically. I mean, China is the second largest economy. But it's not just about the economy. This, this, and this is the thing we need to understand. This is the thing that we need to understand. Because everything that you, 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 if you look, if you listen to the analysts, you listen to what people are saying, you know, or, you know, particularly the, the you know, the, the, the media people, it's all about, well, China has gotten this thing right, yeah? But they, they seem to have forgotten that the same principle that China used to get this issue right, all right, are the same very issue that they stand against. China doesn't practice democracy, but they are hailing China for using, you know, the, 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 you know the, this, this state power, all right, to, you know, to curb things. Can you see the hypocrisy of the world? This is part of what God is judging. And that's why, for those who think, well, we finally got it. Uh, yeah, once China is okay, then the, the economy is going to bounce back. I've got, a, I've, got you, I've got a good news for you. Sorry, it's not going to work like that. All right? There's something else that is going to come. And God will continue to, to humble all right, the pride of the nations. God will continue. I said it before. Those who were trading with China, who saw the, the wickedness, who saw all right, the evil that is being committed by, by the government of China, who continue to trade, who... Even the, even the, even the, what do you call them now? The Wu, you know, World, World Health Organization. I mean, they were praising China for using, you know, you know, that, that state power, for using communism to shut down the nation. And they say, oh, China got it right. China got it right. China got it right. And I'm saying to myself, look at these people. All of the things that China have done, not just to Christians, even to Muslims, to their own people. So many lives that have been destroyed, wasted. Do you think God is just going to turn a blind eye? So, okay, oh, well, well, let's forget about that. Let's talk about your economy. In the, in the things of God, amen, human economy does not carry the vote, does not define the day. All right? God's economy defines the day. And God's economy starts with righteousness. The Bible says the kingdom of God, amen, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the economy of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The economy of the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And guess what? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God has an order, a standard that he has set in place that we have to follow. When we violate the values of God, when we violate the standard of God, when we violate, amen, the, the, the definition of God's of God's humanity listen to this God will judge us regardless of you know how powerful that we, we think I mean China cannot do half of what uh, you know Babylon did I mean Nebuchadnezzar thought there's no one like me Pharaoh thought there was no there's no one like me but what God did God humbled them God is still in the business of humbling the nations and he will continue to do it. But the thing is, can we read the handwriting? Can somebody actually see that what is going on today is the handwriting of God? This, because that's a problem. When, when we live our life in such a way that we've been so captured by, by worldly pattern of thinking, when God moves, no, we don't see God. You know, we see coincidence. No, we see, you know, uh, uh, you know climate. We see, you know, it, well, it's just... It's just the economy. We see something else. No, we can't see God. Why? Because we are not. We are not trained. We are. We, we, we are not developed. Amen. To see. To understand that this is God. This is the handwriting of God. This is God speaking. You know. It took. It took. It took. It, it took Egypt. All right. It took Egypt. That tenth plague for them to say, "Wait a minute. <laughs> We've got to let those people go." It took the tenth plague, which is, amen, the death of the firstborn of all Egyptians. That, that is how hardened the heart of humans. You see, Egypt represent, amen, the condition of the world system. All right? Babylon represent the condition of the world system. You understand? These are, these are nations full of themselves, proud. Yes. They say, we will build a tower to reach to God. We will reach God on our own terms. You know what China is doing? China is saying there is no God. China said there is, there is nothing like God. We define, amen, to you who God is. China says their system is God. That's why if you call any God, do you know the number of churches that have been destroyed? Well, this is my perspective to what is going on. Somebody may give you a different perspective. Well, we know in parts. 
But this is the path that heaven has shown me. All right. All that is happening is because, amen, of the way, amen, certain regions of the earth have treated the people of God, have treated the things of God, have treated the creation of God. In the day where man start worshiping the creation more than the creator, Alabashayanda, heaven will step up his judgment. I say in the day where we begin to worship, amen, created things, all right? When, when we begin to worship the things that our hand have shaped and formed, all right? When we begin to worship money, we begin to worship, amen, you know, the, uh, the biggest economy. Who, who's got the biggest economy? When we begin to worship, amen, uh, you know, how, 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 how big we can create, you know, destructive bombs, all right? When, when, when our idea, amen, of, 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 of humanity, amen, is to control and to own the world. God will judge. But guess what? God is not just going to judge China. God is going to judge every system and every entity, all right, that, that is planning whatever diabolic, you know, plan to want to stop and frustrate the advancement of the kingdom of God. The Lord is building his church. The gate of hell will not prevail. All right. All those globalists, you know, a, a, a community, they know themselves, plan, you know, doing all kinds of things, planning all kinds of things, lying all right, to humanity and say, well, we're giving money. We, we're trying to help, you know, society. We, 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 we're trying to create vaccine. We're trying to help Africa. We know what they're doing. We know their heart, all right? We know that they don't have the interest, amen, of Africa or humanity. They want to drop population. They want to reduce population. We know these things. We've been reading about this thing, and the handwriting is so clear. Some of them have been caught, you know, saying these things, life caught on, you know, on tape. They've got to find a way of reducing the population of the world. So, so all of these things that they are happening, I mean, people have said even this coronavirus, all right, is it, some, you know, I, I, I'm, Something that is shaped and formed in, in some lab, lab, laboratory. I won't be surprised. But my issue is, it's not about who, 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 who created who create the coronavirus. That's not my issue. My issue is God will use any occasion, amen, to be ahead and to judge the nations. Yes. And so, whatever plan that they have put in place, that they have orchestrated, all things are working together for the glory of God. All right. Yes. If certain people think, well, they are so rich that they don't care about what happens to the world. They don't care amen, if they lose some billions. All right. If you have 60 billion amen, and, 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 and you decide to give three billion in, in, in the name of trying to assist humanity. Guess what? People will celebrate you. But God knows the heart of man. God knows the heart of man. And we're saying, we're decreeing it today, that every council that is that is that is being orchestrated to frustrate the advancement of God, to adva to, to frustrate the purpose of, of, you know, of the kingdom of God on earth shall not stand. And we're declaring from America, amen, to Europe, to China, to Asia, wherever they are, this is the day of divine judgment. And we're releasing this judgment upon them. So we've got to be broad. That's what I said earlier. We've got, to, we've got to be broad. Let's not be myopic. You know, certain people, they've studied humans. They can see that we're very myopic. Particularly, you know, in Africa where there is poverty. It's so easy, all right, for somebody to throw, a, you know, a crumbs of bread to us. And we all run after that crumbs of bread and never see the bigger picture. We never see the bigger picture. We never see the big, I mean, if, you've been, if you have been living in, in poverty and you're suffering all kinds of, I mean, somebody comes and says, I'm going to do X, Y, Z for you. You're not going to ask, so what would be the motive behind it? Particularly when the person says, this is just on humanity. Have you noticed that many things that people say they do on humanitarian basis, that they've got an agenda behind it? People have tested all kinds of drugs and, and all kinds of things on, 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 on innocent souls. I mean, these are things that we've read. There, there are all kinds of deformity that, 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 that you know, people are facing, particularly in Africa, all right? that, that are done based on certain things that, you know, that, that, that you know, certain people want to, you know, want to test. And they test it on our people. And we don't, we don't know it. They test it on our children. They, you know, they, they, they go via the school. They, they, they enter the schools and they do all kinds. That's why you've got to be careful, amen, the, the so-called vaccine they give to your children in school. You've got to know about it. You've got to know what is made of, what is behind it. Because I tell you, there are wicked people in high places. 
But when they come, they come in the name of humanitarian. They come in the name of they want to help us. They want to listen to this. We are not dance people. We are not weak people. We are not blind people. We are not poor. We are not beggars. We and that's why we Africans need to rise up. Amen. As I'm speaking to Africa, I'm speaking to the rest of the world. We need to wake up. We need to rise up. We need to stop thinking. Amen. From that myopic, amen, little concept of 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 life. We've got to broaden our understanding. God has given us the power of creativity. God has given us the power and the ability to rise up, amen, and, and to face the occasion of the day. Let's not bow our knees to somebody that comes and lie and deceive us in the name of, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, being humanity. Have you noticed that today China owns half of Africa? China owns half of Africa. You know why? Because our leaders are blind. Because they are as blind as bats. They don't see. They don't understand that those loans, whatever China claims to be given to, they are, and it's just to entrap us China Africa today is indebted to Af to you know to China they still take our raw material here and go and go refine it and bring it back and still sell it to us they say they want to build roads they want to give us infrastructure they bring their people to do to do the job so what what is the benefit this is the 21st century. The whole world is is clamming for you know 5G. We all people, you know, everybody say no. We want Huawei. Why must Huawei be the one giving Hallelujah 5G network to Africa, so that we also can become a police state? I'm just saying what the Spirit of God has dropped in my heart. We've got to see. See, when God speaks to me, God, I mean, I, my prophetic perspective is always from, you know, a broader, bigger perspective. It's, it's not from the little. No, no. I don't want to. I, I know the little is important, but we've got to have a broad understanding so that when we pray, all right, our prayer is not limited. We have to pray with a divine prophetic, you know, capacity. Our prophetic sight must be broad. Son of man, what do you see? What are we seeing with this corona? What are we seeing? What is the Lord saying to us? Watchmen, what is left of the night? This is the night watch. And in the night watch, we cannot afford to doze. You know, to fall into a, a, a second of slumbering. While men slept, the enemy sneaked in. I want to say something to us. We must never allow the enemy to hijack this moment, amen, to perpetuate certain evil, to do certain things that will create, that will leave, amen, the seed of fear, amen, in our continent. We have to, we have to protect, amen, our, our society. We have to protect our family. We have to protect our children. And I'm not just talking about protecting them against Corona. No, against what the spirit of Corona is releasing, the fear, the uncertainty, the panic all right the the, the 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 sense of not knowing what to do not the sense of powerlessness the the sense of discouragement we must not allow that to happen the sense of death have you seen how the spirit is releasing death into the into the atmosphere no we have to rise up and say no in the name of jesus we say no amen to what corona is bringing corona is not just coming alone it's coming with its entourage yes the bible says when when, when, when you don't keep where what, what has been given to you and the enemy comes back and find the place garnished it goes back and brings seven more powerful demons than itself and this is what we're seeing so there are all kinds of you know a, a barrage of demonic activity right now that is that is flying all, all across this the atmosphere of nations all right and people say i don't know what to do I, i'm losing my mind because they say shut down <laughs> people are losing their mind we have to we have to intervene we have to take authority in the spirit and say, no, we are not going to allow the spirit of insanity. We're not going to allow the spirit of depression. We're not going to allow. This is a time to rejoice. All right. This is a time. That's what I said yesterday. It's time to go out there. Amen. And release a word of joy and word of peace. This is the time to encourage somebody. This is the time to allow somebody to know that it's not over. 
Let's not allow the narrative of the enemy, amen, to carry the day. It's time to rise up, amen, and begin to let the devil know that you meant it to be evil. Mm -mm. The Lord has turned it around for our good. Those who know their God, we are. In every generation, the Lord, amen, looks for a remnant, amen, a company of, of, of separated people. Yes, God, God, God was scanning through the earth. He found a man by the name Noah. Noah became the standard. You can become the standard, amen, of this brand new day. I can become the standard of this brown new day. It's not over. There, there is a group of people that people can run to. Son of man, what is left of the night? This guy is positioned amidst the darkness, amidst the you know the evil and and the and the confusion. This 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 watchman was positioned such that when somebody came to him, he was able to reply. This is what is left of the night. The morning is coming, but yet the night is still going to be is going to be there. We've got to be able to have prophetic understanding, prophetic sight, ability to give people clarity. Amen. We should be able to give people clarity of the nature of the days that we live in. Yes, the darkness is, is pervading the earth, gross darkness of people. But this is the day the Lord says we must what? Arise and shine the light. The best time to shine the light is in the midst of darkness. The beauty, amen, of the star is in the night. Nobody, nobody, nobody sees the star in the day. Nobody appreciates. In fact, nobody sees the, the star. You, you don't see it. But if you want to see the glory of the star, hallelujah, let the night fall. We are not afraid of the night. The Bible says, amen, we are, we are not of the night. We are sons of the day. Hallelujah. Christ in us, amen. The brightness, the brightness of, of all glory. Christ in us, the hope of all glory. Listen, friends, I want to encourage us this morning to put on the whole armor of God. This is the time for us to rise up, amen, and engage, hallelujah, the forces of hell. Listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places we are challenging those wicked powers hallelujah they have no place in our in our in our domain we want our people amen to wake up we want their eyes of understanding to be enlightened that is why i am here hallelujah that god will open the eyes of this nation that god will open open the minds of the of the people of this nation so that they can see themselves amen in the true light of how god has ordained and destined their life amen not see yourself as just some you know color that has no has no sense of direction or future not see yourself as oh well i'm i'm, I'm white and therefore i am i am better better than no not see yourself as well i'm just i'm just i'm, I'm a black person we in charge we in control this listen listen friends when god gives us a nation he gives us base on his prophetic intention every nation carries a prophetic intention and it's that prophetic intention that keeps us abreast that keeps us aligned that keeps us on the path amen to fulfilling we are all here to fulfill god's divine purpose and if Jesus started, we'll continue, hallelujah, to fulfill that purpose. Because listen to this, there is, there is nothing we can do. Nobody can say, well, I'm going to own South Africa. You can't own it. You can't own it. It's given to us to fulfill, amen. That's why we're all born here. <laughs> so some of us, you're born here. Some of us are not born here, all right? Some of us have migrated here. Others, amen, will come here. Others will move out of this place to other territory, to other city, to other nation. Because that is how God's counsel and purpose, amen, pans out. God is at work in us, both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. We've got to understand that all that is taking place today, amen, is a divine reset. Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replied, morning, morning. The morning is coming. This is not the time to mourn. It's a breaking of a new day. The morning is coming, but also the night. And if you ask, then ask and come back yet again. And I'll give you the same answer. So what, what, is, what, what, what are we supposed to be doing in the midst of all of this? We looked at this scripture some time ago. The Lord brought this scripture back to my, you know, to my attention again this morning. We need, we need a sense of strong leadership. We need a sense of strong leadership. All right? you, you, you need to connect with us if you've not been connecting with us in our, in our prophetic leadership school. We lay some beautiful foundation that will give us capacity, that will give us amen, the, 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 the sense of position amen, in the spirit. Amen. To operate in that which is called 
prophetic leadership spirit because leadership amen is a state of our spirit before amen it becomes a portfolio that we carry out leadership first is a state of our spiritual being all right god is speaking to us that this is a day where amen, a new a new cream of leadership must emerge all right if we want to pray effectively we've got to be leaders you see it takes leadership it takes the spirit of leadership to wake up 3 a.m 4 a.m hallelujah and begin to call upon the name of the lord and seek the heart of god amen on behalf of the land to know the direction of amen how you know you're going to lead the people in prayer that's leadership leadership is not until you have 10 15 20 people following you it's not it's not about you know the 10,000 following you many people amen who claim to be leaders are just good managers many of them are not leaders and you know management we can all learn the principle of management but to be a leader amen you have to be awakened in the spirit because leadership amen is god's is god's intention for man god placed adam in the garden amen to lead amen adam for you know you know forsook and and, and abdicated that position and you saw what happened the enemy came in you see a leader will stand a leader will mitigate a leader will challenge amen a leader will will interrogate yes a leader will say who goes there what are you doing there a leader hallelujah is not weak a leader is one hallelujah that has understanding insight regarding th things that people have not even seen yet to be a leader you must be prophetic because it's from that leadership spirit that you can pray effectively the bible says the present day ministry of jesus is that he's seated at the right hand doing what interceding why is he interceding because it's through intercession that we that we receive amen the input amen of heaven in our lives in our space it's through prayer it's through intercession that we begin to see things it's through prayer that we begin to understand the directives of the spirit it's true effective governmental prayer that we can push back amen the counsel of the enemy and advance amen the, the, the you know the, the the things of the kingdom jesus said i will build my church it takes leaders amen to build in alignment with the counsel of god it takes leadership amen to 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 to, to see what god is doing and to partner with him a leader is not just one who has influence to you know to to express his, his idea no it's not about your idea it's about god's intention because a leader is a sent one a leader is a sent one. A leader is a sent one. You're sent to do something. God's plan and will, amen, is what a leader, a true leader is sent, amen, to carry out. Even in your so-called secular job, secular work, amen, in the things of God, there is nothing like secular. All of our call and assignment, amen, are sacred before God. How we raise our children, where we walk, amen, you know, how we, you know, interact, how we spend our money, all everything about our life is sacred if it's sacred amen it is sent it is it is utilized by god so you walk in there you got to see that job amen as your place of of ministry as your place to express the authority amen to express the glory of god and when the when when time comes and god says well you, you're done here i'm going to take you that's why i see in the things of god purpose is not permanent purpose is not permanent purpose is journeying with the lord God will have you function in this place, amen, for the next five years, for the next five months, or for the next five, five days. That's your purpose, amen. Purpose is mobile when it comes to the things of God, amen. For the Bible says everything in God, amen, has a movement. We're moving towards a place. As long as whatever we're doing is leading us, moving us, amen, pushing us to a place where we can better fulfill the counsel of God. You see, destiny is a progressive advancement into that place called destination in Christ. Destiny is a progressive advancement into that final place, amen, where we fulfill, where we come into what is called destination. Every, every, every destiny has a movement, Destiny is not some, oh, well, I, I discovered it there and I'm doing it. No, no, you've got to move towards it. So I'm speaking about leadership. The Lord dropped this scripture again in my heart. You know, the Bible says David called his, his, his man. Let's, read, let's look at our, uh, First Chronicles 13. David conferred with, conferred with his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He said to them, he said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it's good to you, and if it's the will of the Lord our God, let, let us send word far and wide to the rest of our brothers throughout the territory of Israel. And also to the priests and to the Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture land, 
to come and join us. Let us bring the ark of God back to us, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. This is the reason why calamity has befall us. We did not inquire amen of of the presence of god we we because we did not have the presence of god we don't have that symbolic amen a, 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 a furniture of the presence of god in the nation he says he says that is the reason why all of this issue all of this plague all of you see where where god rules where god earlier has been given free course where god is allowed to do as he wills there is no plague earlier that can come there there tell me Show me that thing that can attack, that can stop, or that can influence, or that can, you know, you know, hinder that which God has ordained. No, when, when we begin to face the kind of things that we are seeing today, it immediately tells us it's because, you know, we've discarded God, we've rejected him, we've pushed him aside. David, a man of wisdom. He knew that amen, it's not enough amen, to raise the best army. David knew that it's not enough amen, to, you know, to, to find you know, you know, vaccination for all of this. We need the vaccination. We need all of these things. But David understood that, wait a minute, what we need that is, that is paramount amen, is to bring back the presence of God. This is, this is what the nations need now. We need amen, to, to, to forgo, to let go amen, of our ideology of how to build a nation. You cannot build a nation, hallelujah, without the values of God, all right? Many of these nations in America and Europe, they've all thrown, amen, to, you know, to, in, thrown away the standard, the values of God. The sense of morality has been cast away, all right? This is a day where they're allowing nine-year-old to have sex. They're allowing, all right, babies. They, I mean, they're toiling with babies. They, they, they're doing all kinds of crazy things with children. These are days where they, they these people want to destroy the, 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 the values of humanity. They want to destroy it. They, they've taken the innocence of our children away. You see how homes in Europe, amen, has been turned to war zone. You see how, you know, children talk to their parents. You see how they call them names. And if the, the parent can't even say nothing because if they say something, they're going to call the police to come arrest them. This is what scripture says. Father, in, the Bible says in the last day, children will be against their father. Their father, amen, will be against their children. We already seen it. I mean, if anyone, if, if somebody can see what is going on, then you must be spiritually blind. <laughs> you understand? This is a day. I mean, I was just listening to a tape. It was yesterday night. Somebody was saying, it was in Finland, in Finland, in Finland. Just because, I mean, we're not just talking about any other person. A member of the parliament, a member of the parliament mentioned Jesus. You know, talked, you know, make reference to, the, you know, to Jesus, to the Bible. I mean... They began to, you know, the, 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 the security guys began to trail this guy. They began to follow him. They charged this guy to court because they said he used that name. He shouldn't use that name. I'm talking about Finland in this, in this day and age that we live in. Then we talk about freedom. What freedom are we talking about when you're taking the, when you're taking the right of Christians? When you say Christians do not have rights, we cannot speak. But then you're giving our children, you're giving the children the right. That's why children are leading them. That's why children are leading them and they're going to lead them to hell. The Bible says, woe to the land, amen, whose king is a child. Because what does a child know? No, they want to control. They want, you know, they want a government that they can influence, they can control by their own power. But we say it shall no longer be. The Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is arising from Zion. Amen. The Spirit of God, amen, is, is, is tearing the heart, hallelujah, of men again all across the nation. We are taking back the land. We are taking back our place. Men must rise up, amen. Women must rise up. We must all pray. We must dethrone, amen, the spirit of Jezebel. We must dethrone the weakness of Ahab. We must dethrone, amen, the Pharaoh of our time. Listen to this. It's not by might. It's not by by power, amen. All the spirit of terrorism that we've allowed to infiltrate, amen, to penetrate our nation, our society. This is the reason why a nation like Nigeria today is being persecuted because Nigeria has one of the highest Christian population in the world. So let's kill them all. Unfortunately, you cannot stop what God has begun. It's too late for Boko Haram and the rest, amen, to stop what God wants to do. 
That's why I said we've got to have a broad prophetic understanding of the nature of the days that we live in. Heaven is speaking to us at different levels. We cannot afford to be quiet. We cannot afford to be blind. Amen. We cannot afford to be short-sighted. We, our, our sight must be calibrated every day. Whenever we come like this to the presence of God to pray and to hear his voice, we are being transformed. Our spiritual understanding is being revamped. It's being developed. Something on the inside of us is growing and groaning. Hallelujah. We're becoming more more, more connected to the things of God to the ways of God this is not the time friends to draw back this is not the time to go around playing this is the time to focus because listen to this generations yet unborn we need us hallelujah to step into this brand new day it's time to engage in what I call the traveling of Zion for as soon as Zion travels she brought forth we're bringing forth a new day we are bringing forth a new order we're bringing forth hallelujah a new standard via the spirit hallelujah of the presence of God. We want to bring God, God. We want to bring God back to our land. We want to bring His presence back. We want to bring His values back to our homes, to our school, to our institutions. Hallelujah! The the honor of God must be restored back to our nation. The honor. The honor of God must be returned back. David said, "Come, let us go and bring back the 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 ark of the Lord's presence." For in the day of King Saul, King Saul represent amen, the, 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 the compromised leadership. King Saul represent the compromised you know, uh, 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 value system of, of, of the world. Uh, Saul represent the voice of the people. You know, everything about Saul is the people, is the people, is the people. You know, when you focus on the people and you forget about the one who sent you, amen, to lead the people, to, you know, to, to bring the people to certain dimension of spiritual quality. Listen to this. You're going to lose your right. You're going to lose your position. You're going to lose your authority. You're going to lose your home, your family, your marriage, amen, because that's what the devil wants. <clears throat> Everything that defines value, godliness, amen, righteousness is attacking it, is attacking it. And that's why in my home, I raise the standard. I raise the standard. I'm not going to allow no devil, amen, to sneak in into the life of my children, of my family. No, you have to be awake. You have to be alive, amen. You have to be alert. You've got to open your eyes. You've got to be able to sniff things out. You've got to be able to discern things, amen. You cannot just fold your hands and, and just, okay, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. No, you take charge. David took charge. He said, come, let us bring back the presence of God. In the days of King Saul, we did not inquire of him. We did not inquire of, of the presence. It's time. This is it. This is this is this is what we need. This is what this nation needs now. We have to bring God back into our land. Just like Uzziah said, come, let us return back to the Lord. We have to, amen, engage in, 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 in the spiritual amen connectivity where we bring God back to our land, back to our home, back to our family, back to the life of our children, back to the life of our husband, our wives. Amen. We have to, because if we don't do that, listen to this. The disaster would just be too much for us to handle you have people today who've lost their children they've lost lost their home they've, lo they've lost the, the, the sense of dignity of their children they've lost it lost it to drugs lost it to elitist sex perverted sex today you have in south africa you have 11 year old 12 year old getting pregnant you have you, you have 15 year olds who have two children Come on, something is wrong with our standard, with our value standard. So we cannot eat our cake and have it. What side do we want to be? Do we want to be on the side of God or we want to be on the side amen, of the world system? <clears throat> the world system say, allow them. Is there right? Let them, do what, let them do whatever they want to do. No, in my home there is order, there is standard. Because listen, if, if, you, if, you, lose, if you lose your sense of leadership... You're gonna, you're gonna lose the nation. You're gonna lose, amen. You know, I, 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 the things that really matters to you. Have you noticed that this issue of Corona is bringing us back to what really matters? Let's go back. They say, stay home. <laughs> Some people are already dreading. Oh Lord, how am I gonna live with that woman? How am I gonna live with that man for for the next 21 days? In stay in the same house with that crazy woman? Lord, help me. And well, it's time to fix things up. Come on. <laughs> it's time to fix things up how am i gonna live with that ch child 
Because, you see, our job has always been a sense of our escape. Now you go to work. You're eight hours, seven hours, you, you know. By the time you get home, everybody's gone doing their own thing. Everybody's gone to bed. You also go to bed. So, so we've been living a life of lie. God says, no, it's time for us to really get to deal with the things that needs to be dealt with. This, is, this will be the time where you need to believe God for wisdom. How do I speak to this child? How do I speak to this woman? How do I speak to this man? God, help me. How do I bring God back to my home? How do I create the altar of prayer? Many homes no longer have altars of prayer. How do I bring that back to my home? How do I, you know, invite God back to my community? How do I, you know, how do I begin to intervene? On the things that I've neglected, how do I begin to receive directions, amen, in dealing with those things? This is the time. This is God's opportunity for us to make amend. This is the time for us, amen, to repent and turn our heart to God, amen. Let's, let's look at the scripture. Mm, thank you, Father. I've been using this scripture for the past uh, three sessions we've been doing in our morning devotion prayer. All right. Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. It says, come let us return to the Lord. This is, this, this is the voice of God. This is the word of God. Amen. For this season. Come let us. Have you noticed that it's a corporate call? Come let us. Let us return to the Lord. Come let us return to the Lord. Not religion. A lot of people have, are into religion. Um, we're not talking about, he said, let us return to the Lord. The Lord means the one who owns your life. <laughs> the one who owns your life. The one who gave you life. The one who created you. Come, you know, lordship, amen, means the one, amen, who defines you. Who defines you. A lot of people are seeking. We, we, many people have gone to church several times. Now they're shutting down the churches. <laughs> <laughs> they're shutting down the churches they're shutting down the marks everything is being shut down it's time to get to know where you truly get your strength from are you getting your strength from a group or are you getting your strength from him my help comes from from the lord my help comes from the lord is your help coming from the lord or your help is coming from somebody you you trust man will fail you the arm of flesh will fail I mean, we in a day we're seeing it. The arm, God is making sure that the arm of flesh fails us. So we can turn to him. We can return to him. Uzziah, the prophet of God, says, Come, let us return to the Lord. Let us return to the Lord. Don't return to your own things. Don't return to your own mind. Don't return to your own idea. Don't return to your own belief system. Don't return to some God knows what. No, it's time to come read in the scripture. Come, let us return to the Lord. Let us return to the Lord. Listen to the next word. For he has torn us to pieces. You know, some people think all that is, all the war happening in my life is the devil. No, God says, I'm the one. I have torn you to pieces. You know why he torn us to pieces? Because we refuse to listen to him. We refuse to obey him. We refuse to follow his path. All right. Judgment goes. Amen. The Bible says, you know, you know, pride goes before judgment. When you continue to do your own thing, you continue to go your own way. Ah, you're going to meet. There's a way that seems right. It looks right to man. But the end, the Bible says, is destruction. So he, here's a word of redemption. Here's a word of hope. Come, let us return to the Lord for he has turned us to pieces. Listen to the next word. I like this because when God speaks to us, he always gives us the two side. All right. If, if, if you, if you obey me, this is what will happen to you. If you don't obey me, well, this is, this is what you're going to face. All right. It says, for he has turned us to pieces, excuse me. He will heal us. God is the healer. He is called Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. For us to, to, to enjoy healing, we have to return to him. The prodigal son, remember the prodigal son in Luke 15. He said, I'm going to return back to who? To my father. Yes. And I remember speaking, was it yesterday or two days ago? I said, it's time we, we need to return back to our father's house. All right? And I was explaining that the father's house is not just some physical structure that man built with their hand. All right? The father's house is the heart of God. Is that because that's where we came from? We came out from Him, Amen. We 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 are we are made in His image and in His likeness. So we want to return to Him because that is where we find safety. That is where we find provision. That is where we find a covering. He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Let's 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 let's, let's look at that scripture again. It's important, all right, that scripture explains scripture for us. So we don't we don't we don't let the devil continue to lie to us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Are you getting something this morning, friends? Thank you, everyone, for connecting. 
Thanks, Sister Diony. I say that word. Amen. All right. Here's the word of the Lord, because we're talking about returning to the Lord. That's where we find pro protection. That's where we find provision. That's where we find safety. Amen. That's where we find our confidence. That's where we get to be, you know, heal, restore. And that's where we get, amen, to rediscover what we have lost. Listen to this. He would dwell, amen, in the shelter or in the secret place of the Most High. All right. We'll rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Is a covering. We'll rest. Under the shadow of the Almighty, you will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. What is a fortress? A place of defense. A fortress is a place of defense. No coronavirus can meet you in this fortress. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity, hallelujah, can afflict you when you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Under the shadow of the Almighty is called a place of fortress. That word, I mean, is a military word. That's a military word, a fortress. When your house, amen, is fortified, it means it's impenetrable. When your heart, amen, your life is, is fortified by God, no power, no sickness, no disease, no entity, no demon, no Satan can, hallelujah, afflict you. Why? Because you are in the secret place of the Most High. He, he will say of the Lord, the Lord is my refuge, is my fortress, my God. In him I put my trust. Have you seen men who have put their hope and trust in some, you know, business, in some God knows what. Everything is collapsing. Now the government are trying to bail every, everybody out. How many people can the government bail out? Come on. This is a national, a global disaster. It's a day of reset. And we have to turn to the Lord. Because only him, hallelujah, can, can restore to us what we have lost. Only him can restore to us what we have lost. I say only him can restore to us what we, we, we might be losing in this situation. Only God can restore. Only him can restore your home. Only him can restore your business. Only him can restore, hallelujah, your, your, your sanity. Only him can restore your peace. Only him, no man. No entity, no government, not even the American can do that. Only God. And you must have faith in him. You must trust in him. All right? Not just, you know, okay, well, well, I do trust, you know, after I'm a Christian. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you truly laying all down, laying everything down amen, at his feet. You lay it all on the altar. You say, Lord, if you want to consume this thing with your fire, go ahead. Hallelujah. Let it be an offering unto you. Amen. I, but I just want you, Lord, in my heart. I want you back in my life. And when you do that, when God returns to your life, guess what he will return with his blessing with his favor with his goodness listen to this david said i've been young and now i'm old i've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg bread return to the lord return to the shelter of the most high come to him come to him come to him come on south africa come to the lord let's return to the lord let your home be restored to god let your children be restored to God. You may say, well, I don't know what to do. Well, you don't need to do anything crazy. You just need to start praying for them. All right? The more you pray, the more you may see negativity. Don't stop praying because that's what the devil does. The more you start praying for something, you want a breakthrough. The more you're going to see that thing amen, begin to show negativity. But don't give up. Don't give up. Stay consistent. Stay constant. Return. Return to your return to your first love. Come on. Return. Return. Come on. As you are returning, heaven is returning back to you. The peace of God will return. The joy of God will return. The love of God will return. Hallelujah. The tranquility of God will return. You will have peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. You return to the Lord. His peace will flood your heart. In the midst of war, hallelujah, you, you will remain firm. You will remain stable. You will not be moved. No devil can attack you. No power can stop you. No Satan, amen, can hinder what heaven, amen, has begun to do in your life if you will return to him. If you will turn your heart to him. 
If you will align your heart to him, if you will rest in his promise, if you will stay, hallelujah, listen to this, he will bring you joy, he will bring you peace. You may not see it immediately, and sometimes it may be immediate, but guess what? Time when it comes to the things of God really does not matter because time is part of the spiritual program of God, amen, in preparing us and in maturing us to receive what he wants us to receive. In his own time, he makes all things beautiful. Makes all things beautiful. So this is the day of the Lord, friends. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has injured us. He has, he has torn us to pieces. He will heal us. He has injured us. Amen. But he will, he will restore us. He will bind up our wound. After two days, he gives us a timeline. I hope you understand that a day before the Lord is a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day before the Lord. So when God said to this, you better ask him, all right, to give you clarity. So you don't have what I call, you know, a, a false expectation. Because false expectation, particularly in spiritual things, always lead, amen, to disappointment and depression. <clears throat> a lot of people get disappointed in God, get disappointed in the things of God. They say, but God, you told me. God gives you a prophetic word. I was thinking about that yesterday night. What do you do with a prophetic word? How do you handle a prophetic word? And how do you relate even with a prophet? All of these are things that we should look at. God gave you a prophetic word. You run ahead, all right, without really understanding the, techni the technicality, all right? A lot of people want to connect and relate with the prophet, but they don't understand the technicality of connecting with a prophet. A prophet lives in a dimension of life that is totally different from on our ordinary humans. That's the truth. And I talk about ordinary, I'm talking about, you know, your, your normal Christian life. No, prophets don't live in that realm. All right? Their, their emotion is totally different from the normal emotions of the people. <laughs> their, their, their way of seeing things is totally different. All right? So a prophet can give you a word under an unction and you just, hallelujah, you want to run with it. But guess what? You, just, you may just be at default. Because the same prophet that is excited, the next minute this guy is crying, he's weeping, the next thing he's jumping. You, 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 you cannot truly get to understand a prophet or a prophetic word if you are not a person of the spirit. You get disappointed. You get disappointed in God. You get disappointed in, in his servant. You get disappointment in the things of God. Amen. And you go to your own and the enemy finishes you. He likes it like that. It's a day of wisdom. Wisdom must build a house. Wisdom must guide you. Wisdom must direct you. Wisdom must lead you. Wisdom must structure your life. Come on. This is the time to return. When you return back, amen, they take you back to the house of the portal. They break you and they begin to remold you. Yes. You know, it's a, it's a dangerous prayer to say, God, use me. <laughs> The other said, it's a dangerous prayer to say, God, use me. Because you don't know what you're saying. Once you say, God, use me. Ah, you've given them permission. They will strip you of, of every idea, of, of every iota of your own strength. Because when they're going to use you, they'll make sure that there is nothing of yourself. Amen. Remaining. Then they pour into you. Then you can go out there and truly represent God. All right. And the way you yield, amen, to the degree you yield, amen, will define, you know, the, the, the sense of timing that it will take for you to be used of God. We all, we all want God to use us. But the thing is, are we ready to yield our hearts? This is a cry. This is the reason why a lot of people, all right, they put their hand in the plow today, they, you know, tomorrow, and they look back. Tomorrow, they say, no, 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 I don't want to go again. I'm tired. No, no. You cannot do that. If you put your hand in the plow, you don't look back. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us this morning. As we, as we hear his voice, as we hear his mind, as I round up this morning, I want you to begin to look into your own heart, into your own life. Friends, it's not over. This is, this is just a transition into a brand new day. It's a transition into a new beginning. This is a day where you must encourage yourself. This is a day where you must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is the day where you, you need not to lean on to your own understanding. The understanding of the world system. Understanding means the way you perceive things. Your understanding, all right, can lead you into trouble. Because we all do not see, amen, from God's view. Therefore, our arrival of understanding differs. 
It, that's the reason why we're arguing. That's the reason why we fight. Because we see from one point of view. And we stand on what on that point of view and say, no, 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 but this is what I see. This is what I know. They say, but you've only seen one part. This is the reason why, all right, when the heaven is speaking to us, they speak to us from a four-faced dimension. <clears throat> There's a face of a man, the face of a lion, the face, you know, or, or, you know of, 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 an, of an horse. All of this, the face of an, of an eagle, they have all kinds of dimensions. Like I said, God speaks in multi-layers. God speaks in multi-dimensional reality. And you need somebody sometimes to just give you perspective, okay? You know, sometimes, have you, have you ever had a dream? And you have all kinds of scenes in the dream. It's like you've got this dream. This is what you're, you're, you're seeing. And suddenly the scene changes. All right. And it's like the dream don't, don't make sense. Everything just looks scattered. Uh -uh. They do make sense. It's just that the scene, the scene of the, of the dream, amen, differs. God speaks to us in dreams and visions. Yes. That's why we need to develop strong spiritual you know, a, a, a state of mind so that when they give us a dream, we know how to interpret dreams. To, to, un to understand dreams, you need to understand biblical interpretation. You need to understand prophetic symbolism because basically that's what God used to speak to us in dreams. All right? He speaks to us through symbols. All right? Some, sometimes you, you have this dream and, and the interpretation of that dream is basically the opposite. So if you don't have understanding of how to interpret dreams, you don't know, amen, how to connect to, how to connect, you know, uh, uh, scriptures to, you know, to, to elements, all right, to, you know, to things, you know, sometimes dream is like a movie, it's like you're watching a movie, yes, you know, you, you, you be confused. My people perish for lack of the knowledge of God and the knowledge of the things of the spirit. In this season, a lot of people will be having all kinds of dreams. And if they don't have a clear, you know, firm spiritual foundation, you know, somebody will give them a wrong interpretation of the dream. You know, I'm, I'm not one that is into, uh, you know, uh, uh, frequent dreams. But when God gives me a dream, I can be rest assured it will come to pass. And most time my dream is always about nations. It's always about, you know, leaders in government. Hardly will God give me a dream about just, you know, maybe my, my, my immediate life, family, or people. No, no. My dream is always, I mean, if I, if I share some of the dreams that I've had about nations, well, oh, Lord. <laughs> some people are like, how do you do this? I could remember my friend, Robin, before he went to be with the Lord. There's a particular dream the Lord gave to me about my nation, about my country. And I was in the midst of my, you know, my president. And I was giving him, asking him some questions about the state of the nation. <laughs> and Robin was so he, he was so so sure that this is this dream is from the Lord that he was willing if he had money he would have sponsored me to Nigeria just to go give the that vision that that dream to you know to you know to you know to the people that matters in in authority wow that's that's what we're talking about we have to really believe because listen God doesn't waste you know his his resource God doesn't waste his dream. When God gives you a dream, have you noticed that it was a dream that saved Jesus, his parents? Uh-huh. In the days where Herod, yes, it, God used the dream to save them. God can use a dream to save you. But guess what? If your mind is perverted, if you don't have the right state of mind, even if God gives you a dream, you will interpret it wrongly. And that's what the devil has done. The spiritism people, they've used a man, godly dream, pervert it, and bring us into imprisonment. And this is why, you know, the, the teachings that I've been doing in our leadership prophetic school is very vital because I've been laying the right footing and foundation that will help us to be able to, you know, begin to build what you define as strong prophetic spirit. If, if you want to build the things of God, you must have solid spiritual foundation so that, amen, you don't get to be lied to and you don't have a wrong expectation or you don't have a false expectation or you don't have, you know, a, a situation where the, the things of God are, 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 you know, are falsely interpreted or misinterpreted. All of these are the things that God is speaking. God is resetting his church. God is rebuilding his church. So I'll build my church. These are the instruments of rebuilding. Friends, this is the day of restoration. I want to encourage you. Be encouraged in the Lord. Stand firm in the Lord. Stand strong in the Lord. Let the will of God prosper in your hand. But you've got to open your heart to him. Father, we honor you this day. We bless your name. We glorify you. 
Thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to us in such a way that uh, we cannot deny. Your voice, your heart is coming to us loud and clear. As you're speaking to us from individual level, you're speaking to us from a family, community level. You're speaking to us, oh God, from a national and a global level. We thank you for your heart. We thank you for your mind, oh God. We embrace your voice. Holy Spirit, we open to you. Continue to walk in our heart that we may present to you, O oh God, a circumcised heart, a contrite heart. Because indeed, a one with a contrite heart, with a circumcised heart, you will not despise. We thank you this morning as we begin this day, O oh God, even in, the, in this season of a shutdown. 21 days where we're going to be shut down as a nation. Wow, that is this that that itself is prophetic. I don't know who 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 who, who asks all right that the president all right to choose 21 days, but that is very prophetic. Very prophetic. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We bless your name. We glorify your name for your spirit that is at work in our heart, in our life, in our nation. After 21 days, this nation will be new, will be brand new again. This is a time where we need to wait on you. We need to call upon you. Those who need to take time to fast, we need to fast. Those of us that you're speaking to in regards to Holy Communion, we need to take communion. Lord, I thank you again that you brought it again into my mind that we will look for a day, a time where we can all gather and have this beautiful experience of breaking bread online. And this is not because we are afraid. No, this is because we, we want to ignite. We want to revamp. We want to renew our covenant with you. Thank you, Father, for that word. Thank you, Father. We want to renew our covenant with you as a nation, as a people, as a, as a family, as, a, as individuals. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. May your will continue to prosper in our hand. Thank you, Lord, for my loved ones, my family, my, 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 my wife, my children, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for my family in Nigeria. Every one of them, I bring them before you this morning. I pray your divine protection upon their lives, oh God. My friends, oh God, many of them outside this country, in America and Europe, wherever they are, I pray for them in Nigeria. I pray for them, grace upon them. Those that we are connected to in ministry, I pray for them, oh God. Strength, provision, clarity, direction, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for your church, strength, oh God, grace, ability to rise up and to step into the fulfillment of your intention in this brand new day. We bless you, oh God. We pray for our nation in South Africa. Bless this land. Bless, oh God, yes, the Sadek region. We declare coronavirus. We neutralize you. All across the earth, we neutralize you. We learn, we learn from that to which you have brought. But we turn to the Lord and we say this day, yes, God is giving us a new chance, a new opportunity to rise above. We turn our heart to him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for, yes, the vaccine to, to deal with this thing. Thank you for divine healing. Thank you for hope and restoration. We praise your name. We glorify your name for a brand new day. Thank you for divine provision, oh God, for your people, oh God, in this time of shutdown. Father, I thank you for surprising your people. Provide for them. And I mean food. Provide food for them. Provide food for their home. All that they need, oh God, in this period, yes, to stay together. And thank you, Lord, for your love that overwhelms their family, their home, their children, oh God. Thank you for Re reunion. Thank you for reconciliation. Let this time be a time of reconciliation, a time of restoration, a time of healing, healing those wound, oh God, that we have refused, oh God, to deal with. May this time be a time to heal. We thank you, Father. We bless your name in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much, everyone for you know joining us this morning for connecting thank you so much sister diony thank you brother mervin for connecting amen thank you so much everyone thank you sister myrtle thank you uh woman of god uh reverend stella a big winner thank you so much and those who uh we usually connect with us but i can i normally will not see you um, i'll see your name but thank you everyone that has connected with us this morning may the lord continue to keep us may he continue to protect us may his will continue to prosper in our hand may he give you rest amen and may you understand that this is a season of his Sabbath. All right? The land will rest. And so are we going to rest. Amen. God bless you. See you uh, uh, hopefully in, uh, um, in the next few hours. All right? Uh, just see how the day will go. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.